I'm Lisa Bauer. You are watching Dirty Dog Live Music. Tonight we are at Natalie's Sports Garden in downtown Meeville, Pennsylvania with the band all the way from Kentucky. I'm so pleased. This is probably the furthest away that we've had a band come and do our show, but we are seen in Kentucky and uh, we're very pleased to have you here. It's a bluegrass band, which is one of my favorite genres. And we're here with Kevin Prater Band. And this is Kevin. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you all so much for inviting our band to yeah. take part of this for Thank you. our very first time and our very first time in this part of the country. Thank you. So, uh, could you introduce the rest of the band for us? I sure most certainly can. The young man sitting behind you here on the stool is Mr. Tom Timberlake. He's my banjo player and second guitarist. And the young man sitting beside you is our newest band member. He comes from North Carolina. His name's Adam Burles. He plays the fiddle. And the young gentleman sitting up on the stool beside Adam there is my first guitarist and lead and part singer. That's Mr. Rick Bartley. Hi, Rick. And, and my bassist extraordinaire over there, my old compadre, Mr. Danny Stiltner. Now he looks like a bassist. <laughs> you look like a bassist. He's truly Sorry. one of the best. <laughs> So tell me, Kevin, uh, how long has the band all been together as a the group? The band has been together about seven and a half years now. Uh, me and Tom actually formed the band um, from about a 24-year partnership playing music together and something we'd wanted to do for a long time. And I always credit him because he really pushed me into wanting to do this. I, I'd been a side man for over 20 years in the music business and spent my life on the road playing and he told me if I didn't do this now I would probably regret it someday so uh, at times I'd like to kill him but, but uh, <laughs> I love it we have a lot of fun with it and, and, and there was a stretch that I played the bass with James King as, as he, he was a member of him okay. and, uh, so you guys come to each other yeah I, I, I had been in the music year you know 20 some years ago mm -hmm. and it got down to it and a, and a lot of people remembered me the musicians especially but the people didn't mm -hmm. and i got to be out among the people and they didn't know who i was really and i got to listen to what the crowd was talking about and, as, and they talked about this fellow right here as I, much I, as they talked about james and that's what i told him no disrespect to james james was great but that's what i told him it's time for you to get out of the sidelines mm -hmm. I read that uh, that uh, you played uh, Dollywood there for quite a while. I did. I played Dollywood two years and uh, had a great, great stint down there with uh, one of my fellow uh, bandmates who's actually out on the road now, David Atkins and uh, Kelly Belcher and Ricky Adams. We had a band all through grade school and high school called the Elkhorn Grass, and uh, we played together for almost 11 years. So. Uh, well, as soon as we graduated, we were actually already working there on the weekends, and we went to work full time, done two year stint there as the band, and then I played in some project shows down there and stuff too. So we we had we had a great time in that part of the country too. Uh, truly enjoyed it. So how how did you guys come about? I've known Kevin since he was probably moved to. Elkhorn City when he was what, nine years old? Ten. Ten years Ten. old. He used to have weekly gatherings up my uncle's house and play music, two or three day stretches and he that's why I first met him when he was real young and aspiring musician. Dan's, Dan's father, uh, the late yeah. Blake Stiltner, was one of the greatest known musicians in our part of the world. And I actually knew Dan's dad before I ever got to know him. I had played music with his daddy before I ever played music with Dan. But I found out that Dan and his brother, Randy, both were great accomplished bass players by the time I got to know who they were. And, and of course, their dad was considered the master around yeah. there, and he was up until his death. And, and my um, son, you know, was talking about his old friend Dave Atkins. He's a touring band now. He's got his own band. My son plays the bass, upright bass with him. Okay. So it's it's a it's a family thing. A lot of I I can just about really consider Dan family. He there's there's nothing but uh, kudzu vine and grass and trees betwixt us. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we me and him pretty much grew up together. That's great. Uh, these other people, I <laughs> other than when they get on the bus or in the van, I have no clue who they yeah. are, where they come from. <laughs> Don't know. I I've known Rick over for probably. 
probably I'd say about five six years but uh, personally got to know him real well the last three years we've worked off and on together and of course he joined us full time back last year and and uh, I've known Rick songwriting for a long long time he's a great accomplished songwriter in the world of bluegrass music he's made tens of dollars off of the songs that he's written too <laughs> and then I got enough to buy a cup of coffee right <laughs> but not at Starbucks <laughs> <laughs> and Adam here, we I've kind of watched Adam grow up. Adam was uh, him and his brother. They toured together as the Burroughs brothers, and then of course no he's played with a lot of different bands. And uh, he can't keep steady work, but uh, he uh, <laughs> plays a lot of different instruments and, and things. And uh, I've actually known him for quite some time, probably about six years now, I guess. He's yeah. he's been a he's a young little kid when I first seen him play. And him and his brother both. So, just who, who wrote most of the songs we're going to hear tonight? Well, that's that's going to be kind of difficult to explain. We draw music from so many different wells and different genres. Tonight we got some things picked out. There will be a couple songs. <laughs> Um, come from our new album. We have a new CD. It's called Walking Rails and Counting Ties. Probably uh, some of the first songs up in the set, uh, probably like the second and third song, will be uh, a Mark Brinkman and a Mike Evans tune, which is back in Tennessee. Um, there'll be a song on there written by Alvin Clevenger called Borrowed Time and Renting Land. Um, Rick will do probably an old Don Williams tune first. It's uh, Fly Away. Um, or probably the show opener will be an, an old time fiddle tune with, that's got old lyrics to it. And I could have no clue to tell you where that song comes from. It's called Lost John. It's just an old traditional tune. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Of course, Rick will do uh, toward the end of, the, of our show tonight. He'll do a song that he written about his grandfather. And like I say, our music comes from a wide variety. I mean, it's a deep well, endless well. I mean, for one minute, we can go back and really play hardcore tradition. The next minute, we could be playing old rock and roll and old country and old gospel. And Bill Monroe to the animals. That's it. So it's, it's, it's a pretty wild imagination to where all of our music comes from. And uh, we try to try to please the crowd. That's what I try to do. I mean, I don't want to be labeled as one certain thing. Yeah, I know it's kind of it's like Tom has always said, we're a bluegrass band and we understand that. But I'm not a bluegrass musician. I am a musician. And there's a right. major difference. A musician can, to me, he or she can play any style of music. Now, to say, to say that uh, we can rap, <laughs> that might not be. Well, we haven't tried that yet. You know, we do pretty. Not good. everybody can rap. Yeah, yeah that's it. You know, we do pretty good at Christmas time date. on our presents and stuff like yeah. that. But that's that's about the hardcore. But all all seriousness, um, we um, it, it's a wide majority, just a vast majority of sources. I mean, we uh, there's stuff that comes from back in the days of Sam Cooke. Um, there's things that comes from people like Dean Martin, mm -hmm. and I mean I can I can sit here and name you a, a list. Wild, it's just wild. Would um, it's a big imagination. So it's you wouldn't really think of a lot of it in bluegrass music, but it's there. Bob Dylan. <laughs> so. And you know John Prime. I mean, gosh, I, I, I like I say, I couldn't begin the name. We just put our little touch, little flavor on all that. So, so this is a lot of times when you go to festivals and stuff like that, you just give people what they ask for. Yeah, what they want. Great. Well, I'm anxious to go hear it. You guys ready to go do it? We're we're more than ready and okay. can't wait. All right, let's go. Thank you. John, boys, one, two, three, go.
right, we're going to feature a brand new song right now. This is from our latest album. It's called uh, Walking Rails and Counting Ties. And the title of the song was written by Mark Brinkman, entitled Back in Tennessee. One, two, three. <laughs> so much. Here's another song from the new album we have out and we hope you enjoy this. It's entitled Borrowed Time and Rented Land. <laughs> Thank you. 
Time in rented land. All right, we feature this young man with a fiddle here. Is Mr. Adam Burrow is going to do a little fire on the mountain for him, son. so much. We're going to feature the young man with the guitar here right now to sing you an old tune. Does a great job on Mr. Rick Bartley to sing Fly Away for you, Tom. <laughs>
regardless. Thank Fly you. away. Good job. Here's an old tune that I learned back many, many years ago, one of my favorite songs to sing, and I hope you enjoy it. One entitled The Tennessee Blues. <laughs> Sea Blues. I love that old song. Here's Rick Bartley to sing an original song that he wrote about his grandfather entitled Like My Granddaddy. <laughs>
up his hand. Bluegrass is some of my favorite music. It it um, inspires me. I don't know whether it's the the gospel roots and you know some of the spiritual roots in bluegrass that it generally is very uplifting though. It makes me happy. So it's it's got several different sides to it, kind of like a, a wide genre of music. Um, bluegrass comes from as as Monroe always said, it comes from the blues. Mm -hmm. And of course, the grassroots of it, like you just said, is the gospel part of it. The story part of it is is a big mainstay of bluegrass music. I think the story songs probably captivate people as much as anything. And of course, there's there's tragic romance, there's love and murder and mayhem. <laughs> That's it. And then there's certain songs. I know we just uh, we just received a review on on our latest project. And the, and the review basically stated that it was one of the most upbeat yet saddest products <laughs> that they had ever seen. They didn't understand how you could take sad music and make it that happy. So, I mean, I, I don't know how you would describe that either, but it's... Uh, well, it's, it's just really wide and deep. I mean, there's so many the different. Years, there's just so many different ways for it to go, you know. So mm -hmm. it's. Uh, there's no limits to it. Does it go? God will you, have you crying like a baby, music. or dancing yeah. all over the place. The next song. Mm -hmm. You yes, know, I agree. A lot of people always get the, the misconception when you say bluegrass and acoustic music, you know, they they automatically see the hay bales and the checkered shirts. And that's and not the, true, right? And, the, and the straw hats and, you know, and the banjo player sitting there with a moonshine jug in his hand. Well, you know, come from eastern Kentucky, yeah, we know what moonshine is, but we never did see it in one of them fancy jugs. You know, it was lucky, yeah. it was lucky to get it out of a quart jar. Well, <laughs> and, and to show that what we were talking about with the different genres, we, we were playing in Nebraska one time and uh, it was a redneck crowd mm -hmm. I mean uh, we did everything that we could think of first three or four songs and they just sat there and looked at us we immediately went into Sweet Home Alabama mm -hmm. and they raised the roof off the place. that's right and we went right back to our regular show and they loved it yeah, right. It was just yeah, I, yeah, He's got, yeah, right, you got to touch yeah. the crowd, right? That's it. You got to play to the crowd. It's it's right. it's all about the people. I mean, that's that's what our band has always been focused on too. So, I mean, and one of us is always watching the crowd to see what what they're interested in. Well, that's part of being a successful band, yeah. is, you know, being in demand and you guys are definitely in demand. Um, how people can how can people find you? Well, um, several different ways. I mean, um, the one of the best is, of course, our website, which is www.thekevinpraterband.com. Right. You can find us on Facebook as the Kevin Prater Band. Um, we're on uh, Twitter. Uh, a lot of the different social media leaks. I'm I'm not 100% on all that. Um, a shout out to our booking agent and publicist, Miss yep. Stacy Wright. Yes. She, she handles all that. She's 24/7, nonstop, working for the KPB. And I mean, she. Uh, yes, yeah, Stacy helped me coordinate everything with you guys yeah, she here. Did. She did. She did a great she job. She worked really hard, and and she. Uh, 
she deserves a medal of valor and honor for putting up with all of us, especially you know, me. It's, really, it's the people in the background a lot of times that really help push a yeah. good, successful band. Well, she, so yeah, like she will say, give she, Stacey she credit. She did a great works, job. And she does. And I mean, she believes in this so so hard and just with her heart and so deeply. And, you're lucky and to have we're, her. We are. We're blessed. And I mean, you know, we're, our hat's off to her and love her so much for everything she does. You guys do a lot of festivals. As a matter of fact, I know you're on your way to a festival now, so I don't want to hold you too much longer because we need to get rolling here. Um, yeah. Want to give a shout out to Meadville Police for helping us coordinate this as well. You guys brought a huge tour bus, and I want to say thank you to them for uh, helping us with parking. Us. Right. Um, we live in a great area. That's right. We live in a great area. We have great people. Um, I couldn't be happier. This is just yeah. wonderful. So thank you very much for coming. Uh, we want to say a, a special thanks to you oh. and to, to Dirty Dog <laughs> for letting us come be a part of this and, uh, you know, getting us some publicity up in this area. And, uh, and you know, I know your feed goes all the way down into, you know, Kentucky it and does. all over different places. And it's a, it's a great thing. And, and we're honored to have oh, been a part of this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's what it's all about. It's all about helping everybody be seen in places maybe they weren't, you know, and all you other groups out there, by all means, yeah. come by and take part in this. Thank you know, you. these these people work hard, you know, to get get the media out here on these groups, and it's it's a wonderful thing. We need more of this. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That's nice. These guys here too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, our yeah. camera our camera guys. They right. they don't get to be seen very often, but if you go to my Facebook page, occasionally I'll post a picture of them. All right. It's there. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, we will see you out there. All right.